welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time I've got two meters to take a look at um, both from Kai Wheats. the people at Kai Wheats have very kindly sent these to me for review uh, and it's the ST100 and the ST120 now outwardly they appear to be uh, quite similar uh, but when I started having a good look at them I realized that although they appear similar and in some ways they are they've also got some significant differences so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to review them separately because i think it'll be well it'll be less confusing for me hopefully it'll be less confusing for you too if it's something you you're interested in so this time i'm going to start with the st100 and then in a future video i'll do the st120 so let's start by taking a look at the specifications Okay, from the website uh, we get the uh, following table and uh, just talks about AC and DC voltage, the main detection facility talks about the display type, uh, it also talks about the phase sequence detection, that's not something I'm going to test but it does do it, uh, it's got a smart mode and uh, as I'll mention later it's got a, a little LED light which is actually rather handy. Um, that sort of does it a disservice really, you have to delve into the manual which is also online um, to get a bit more detail but essentially we've got frequency to 4 MHz according to the spec it actually does a lot better than that capacitance between 40 nanofarads and 400 microfarads resistance to 40 megohms and diode and continuity measurement so um, let's take a look at it on the bench OK, let's look at what we get in the box with the ST100. Uh, we get a, a manual that's actually quite readable. This is a dual language one, but half of it's um, dedicated to English. And uh, does appear to have been written by somebody who actually can speak English, so that's always good. We get two uh, leads because, unlike some meters, this meter doesn't have a connection at this end. That's just the live wire sensor. And the actual meter connections uh, go in at the top here they're fairly clearly marked with red there and common there for the black one uh, so that's two uh, leads that fit in there and if you want to use it flat on a bench that works uh, rather nicely like that um, and the other uh, things to show you really about the case let's take these leads back out again make it a little bit easier is um, in the back here we've got a cover that's held in with a, with a screw and there are two AAA batteries in there you do get the batteries with the meter so you can get it working out the box and uh, if I switch on we've got a function which allows us to hop through the various modes we've got a hold switch to obviously to um, freeze the display to remember something and if I do a long press on that we've got a torch um, at that end and it's perhaps tempted to think oh well that's a, that's a bit of a gimmick and um, if you've ever, ever been in a mess and used your mobile phone torch you'll know that sometimes what appears to be a gimmick can actually come in quite handy and certainly I've done a couple of jobs in my camper van where it would have been very handy to have a light so I could just um, see exactly where, where I was working so I think that's that's quite a nice touch and obviously it's an LED it's gonna it's gonna last a while with two AA batteries in so that's the um, it's got nice form factor feels nice and solid uh, right let's now have a look at the electrical characteristics okay let's just have a look at some of the um, more often used functions of the meter so we'll switch on with the press of the on off key and we'll just press function which should move us straight into auto mode that's auto for for ohms and volts and also for for continuity eventually there yeah it's not particularly quick on that but um as will make sense in a minute let's start with resistance then stated top limit is supposed to be 40 mega ohms i don't have anything like that so um i've got about an 8.05 mega ohm resistor here that's saying 8.06 mega ohms hopefully you can see there is an m at the top so um certainly does them um, very high resistance is okay uh, down at this end uh this is a 22 ohm resistor it's showing us 21.2 there 21.1 
and because it's part of the continuity circuit you've also got the the alarm sounding and the green light coming on if we that only occurs up to 50 ohms so if we take a resistance that's above 50 ohms here we've got a 68 ohm resistor coming in at 67.5 and as you can see it's not sounding the buzzer so in terms of um ohms yeah seems to be doing okay we're going to do voltage a slightly different way which i'll come to in a minute um, so now i'm going to step forward onto capacitance and i've got um, three capacitors actually uh, first of all we've got this one that said the lowest range is supposed to be 40 nanofarads so i've got a 22 nanofarad here and it does actually pick that up as about 21 nanofarads so that's right at the bottom end of the range so that's good um, just for a bit of a challenge i've got uh, some one microfarad surface mount capacitors here which uh, my eyes can barely see but hopefully if i can move my finger out of the way of display and get about there so 0.976 microfarads it's supposed to be one microfarad i think that's pretty good and then 400 microfarads is the top limit for measurement uh, i've got a 220 microfarad here electrolytic so I'll just get the polarity right and we'll just pop onto the electrolytic and when we do eventually make a connection it'll go blank 218 microfarads so yeah that's um that's pretty reasonable really so that's uh, resistance and capacitance if we press function again we get to diode test so i've got a small signal diode here it's re reading zero that way which should be reverse bias so if i swap the pro probes round we should now get the forward bias voltage of 0.583 volts uh, so yep that's telling me that's a silicon uh, diode small signal diode um, so there are the basic functions and those it does rather well okay so one thing this um, ST100 doesn't do is measure current and that's probably um, for a lot of applications not actually that important but uh, if that does matter to you it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we can uh, we can measure current and that's also quite a handy little test to do anyway so i've got a an led here and i've got a, th a current limiting resistor so let's first of all just measure the voltage across that current limiting resistor uh, it's going up at 2.1 it's saying 2.102 so i'm going to call that 2.1 yeah so 2.1 volts across that resistor and now what i'm going to do is just take out the link so i can just measure the resistance of that resistor uh, and that's coming up at 327.5 ohms 327.5 i'm sure you know what's coming next um, so if we divide the voltage 2.1 by the resistance 327.5 that should give us the current and in this case it's saying 6.4 times 10 to the minus 3 which is about 6.4 milliamps uh, calculated current let's um, double check the on a meter that will do current so here we've got the um, Kiowitz KM601 set to current mode so let's put that into circuit and get that LED to light and see what this display says 6.35 milliamps and my calculated value is about 6.4 milliamps so um, being 100 microamps out I don't think it's too bad and it's a nice little tech chest of check of the, the voltage and the resistance readings on to frequency then I've got the uh, two probes connected to my uh, function generator currently I've got it producing um, 35 Hertz sine wave and you can see there the meters making that 34.88 so according to the spec we've got a range from 40 hertz up to, to 4 megahertz so i don't propose to spend um too long uh, on that but we'll now just go we'll go up to 100 hertz for a start so that's 100 hertz and as you can see um it's about 0.4 hertz low um, that's actually well within the uh, uh, 
the stated tolerance so it is actually uh, doing what it says on the tin so if we now go up to uh, one kilohertz and you can see we're just uh, three hertz off there four four hertz now so again um pretty close uh, i'm going to step up to 10 kilohertz and 9.97 yeah so we're getting this consistently slightly low reading but it's still well within the um plus or minus one percent tolerance that's stated in the manual um i'm now going to go up to one megahertz apologies i just entered one millihertz there let's try one megahertz shall we and it's now saying uh, m on the top there megahertz 9.9.997 megahertz um, so if I step up quickly to 4 megahertz you can see it's easily achieving its stated maximum at 4 megahertz and in fact um, if I continue up to 10 megahertz there um, it's still managing to display that at 10 megahertz which is more than double its uh, stated range which is pretty good and if I now go up to 20 megahertz it's still showing we're all right now what I have discovered is that 20 megahertz, well I'm now saying 21 and actually it's now doing slightly better than it was earlier, yeah there we go. Uh, 23 megahertz it's still saying 21 and a half so um, realistically 20 megahertz is about the maximum but um, that's pretty good for something which um, is supposedly only go to 4 megahertz so frequency range quite impressive. I know people like quite like to see the uh, live wire detection so here is a live wire let's take that machine up to it so get the um, flashing red LED which increases speed um, if you get closer and if I I'm almost well I am touching it now we're getting a uh, a much uh, stronger indication that that is indeed a, a live wire. Okay, well there you have my look at the Kiwitz ST100. I um, think it's quite an interesting meter and uh, particularly think that the uh, mains uh, detection function on this is, is particularly good. So if that's something that interests you, that's probably something that's uh, worth taking a look at. Now I appreciate I've not looked at every single function and gone into detail and none of my equipment is calibrated but you've hopefully got a, a general idea of, um, of the kind of things it's capable of. I'm quite impressed, a nice little instrument. Great for keeping in your toolbox because of its size and uh, it's the kind of thing I'd certainly keep in, uh, in a car toolbox or perhaps in my camper van. If you liking this or in fact any of the Kiwitz meters you'll find there's a discount code um, in the description if you use that you'll get some discount I think it's 10% and uh, that also helps the channel so if you're fancying one you know, you know why not save a bit more money and use the code thanks very much for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video